Hi everyone, welcome to, day, to today's lesson on equations of lines. You can find these notes in unit three, 11, 8, 21, day five notes. The first thing we're gonna talk about today is slope intercept form. And we've hopefully heard slope intercept form before in algebra one. We're gonna to continue to use that when looking at lines. Uh, hopefully you remember, but just in case you don't, slope intercept form is when your equation is in the form y equals mx plus b, where lowercase m is your slope and lowercase b represents your y-intercept or where the line crosses the y-axis. Okay, so in number one here, we have to determine the slope. In the last class, we learned how to find the slope. You can use the equation or you can use the rise over run method because it's already graphed. I like to use that rise over run method. So I start at one point and I go, how many, how many jumps do I need to go up? One, two, three, four. How many jumps do I need to go over? One, two. So my slope, I rose positive four and I ran positive two. Well, four over two reduces to two. So the slope is two. The, the y-intercept is where does that line cross the y-axis? So for this point right here, where it crosses the y-axis, that's at one, two, three, and it's at negative three. So now I have the slope, I have the y-intercept, and I can write my equation. y equals m, m is two, x plus b. Now plus a minus three, would just be written as minus three. So there's the equation of that line. In number two, let's find the slope. I'm going to rise one, two, three, four. And I'm going to run one, two, three, four, five. But this time I went left, so that's a negative five. Negative four fifths doesn't reduce, so that's just the slope. The y-intercept is where intersects the y-axis, which would be right here. So that's a negative two. So our equation y equals mx plus b. There's our equation. Remember a negative four over five or a four over negative five or even a negative four over five, those are all the same number. So as long as you have one negative in the top, in the bottom or out front, that's perfectly fine. And they're all the same thing. Okay. Looking at number three, what's the slope of this line? What's the y-intercept? If you said the slope was negative one-third and the y-intercept was zero, you are correct. Then you would write your equation y equals negative one third x plus zero. Now, when you add that plus zero, we know that adding zero to anything doesn't change it. So your equation is just going to be y equals negative one third x. And number four, what will be the equation of that line? If you said y equals x plus four, you're right. If you said y equals one x plus four, you're still right. If you chose to put a one here in front of the x because the slope was one, I'm okay with that. Just know that you're not gonna really see that written on an assessment or um, like in a textbook or anything because anytime the coefficient is one, usually that's just left out and it's just x because that one is just assumed to be there. All right, now another type of way, another way you might see an equation of a line is in standard form. Standard form says ax plus by equals c. So in this form, it doesn't explicitly give you the slope, but we can convert it to slope intercept form so we could see the slope. This capital A is just a coefficient in front of the x. The capital B is a coefficient in front of the y. So in number seven, I have x plus y equals six. I can't tell what the slope is from this line. I can't tell what the y-intercept is from this line, but we can use a little bit of algebra to put it into our slope-intercept form. 
So if you are given an equation in standard form, your goal is to use some algebra to essentially solve for y. Okay. So here is the y. I want to get it by itself. Right now, I have an x being added to it. So if I subtract an x from both sides, they'll cancel here on the left, leaving me with just the y. And yes, I could write 6 minus x, but I want it to be an mx plus b form. So I'm going to write it with my x term first. So it's going to say negative x plus 6. Now, looking at that equation, I can determine the slope. The slope is negative 1. And I could determine the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 6. In number 8, we're going to do the same thing, just a little bit more because the x and the y have coefficients in front of them. But it's the same idea. You just want to solve for y. So here's the y. You've got to get rid of this 5x. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. That'll leave me with the 2y on the left. And I want it to be in mx plus b form. So it'll say negative 5x minus 2. If you wrote negative 2 minus 5x, you're not wrong algebraically. It's just not in this form. OK, we're almost there. I need it to be y equals. Right now, it's 2y equals. So to get rid of that 2, we're going to divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, leaving me with 1y. And then over here, we're going to divide each term by 2. So negative 5 divided by 2, leave it as a fraction. You don't need to get all fancy with decimals. Just leave it as a fraction. 5 divided by 2 is 5 over 2. There, we still had that x there. Minus, now 2 divided by 2 is 1. So in slope-intercept form, this equation is y equals negative 5 over 2x minus 1. And I would be able to use that to quickly determine the slope. Let's look at number 9. I want to get that y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, leaving me with negative 4y equals negative 2x plus 28. And now all I need to do is divide by negative 4 to get that y by itself. Negative 2 divided by negative 4 is a positive 1 half. This had an x term, so I keep the x. And then 28 divided by negative 4, that's negative 7. So there's the equation of that line in slope-intercept form. Go ahead and try number 10, try number 11, try number 12. I want you to take those equations and rewrite them so that they are in y equals mx plus b form. Try that now. Okay, for number 10, you should have y equals 3x minus 5. Number 11, you should have y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 2. And number 12, you should get y equals 1 fourth x. If you'd like help or extra practice with this skill, you are welcome to join me in office hours or email me and I can send you some additional practice problems. There are also some really good practice problems in OMHS for you also. <clears throat> All right, today's attendance word is slope. S-L-O-P-E, slope. You wanna make sure you write that down. Do that attendance quiz. Slope is your attendance word. Now there are these two special types of lines. We have vertical lines and horizontal lines. A vertical line is written in the form x equals a, where a represents the x-intercept. So if I have a vertical line, its equation is going to be an x equals, and whatever number that is, is where it's crossing the x-axis. So here it's crossing the x-axis at x equals negative 1. So the equation for that line is x equals negative 1. For a horizontal line, you're going to have it in the form y equals a, where a represents the y-intercept. So if I have a horizontal line, the equation for that is going to be y equals 
and then wherever it's crossing that y axis. So at one, two, three. For either one of these, I could pick any point. So if I go back to the vertical angle, any point along this line is going to have an x value of negative one. And because a line goes on and on forever, um, the y values are irrelevant because every single point is going to have an x value of negative one. So if you said x equals negative one, I know that you're talking about a vertical line where x where the x values are all negative one. And when I connect all of those negative one x values, I get this vertical line. For a horizontal line, every single point on that horizontal line is in, has a coordinate of some number and three. Every single point on this line is some number comma three. And when I connect them all, I get that line. Okay, so one thing that you really wanna remember Vertical lines are x equals a constant. Horizontal lines are y equals a constant. Okay, so why do we need to be able to do all of this algebra with lines in a geometry class? Well, this is where we're going to be determining whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Just like last class where we had to calculate the slope and compare the slopes, now the slope is kind of hidden in that equation but we can still find it. So we know that if the slopes are the same, those two lines are going to be parallel. If the slopes are opposite reciprocals, the lines will be perpendicular. And if the slopes don't have either one of those relationships, then they are neither parallel nor perpendicular. So when I look at number one, I have two equations, y equals five x plus two and y equals five x minus one. You wanna find the slope. So these are both already in y equals mx plus b form, which is nice. To determine whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither, I need the slope. So the slope of that first equation is 5, and the slope of the second equation is 5. Oh, well, those slopes are the same. So now I can tell you that these two lines are indeed parallel. They have the same slope. Please remember that the slope is the coefficient in front of x. It does not include the x. So here I would say the slope is 5. The slope is not 5x. The slope is just 5, the number that is describing how steep my line is. And number 2, y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 4, and y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. I want to find their slopes. So in that first equation, it's already in y equals mx plus b. I just need to find the m or the slope. And same with the second equation. We're already in y equals mx plus b. Find the slope. Clearly, these are not the same number, so they're not parallel. Are they opposite reciprocals? Is one negative, one positive? And when I take the numerator and denominator and flip them, do I get the other, the other slope? And I do. The first one's negative, the second one's positive, so that takes care of the opposite part. And three over two's reciprocal is two over three. So they are opposite reciprocals, which means these two lines are perpendicular. Okay. I'd like you to try number three and four. Mm. Nope, never mind. Let's do number three and four together, and then I'll have you do seven and eight. The reason why is I want to practice rewriting those equations together. Right, if you look at number three, these equations are not in y equals mx plus b form. So we have to rewrite them in y equals mx plus b form. So I'm just gonna kind of work on each equation on its own. The first equation, I gotta get rid of this x. So I'm gonna subtract x from both sides. Two y equals negative x plus two. Divide both sides by two. So y equals negative one half x plus one. And then the second equation, I'm going to subtract a 6x from both sides. Negative 3y equals negative 6x plus 21. Divide both sides by negative 3. y equals negative 6 divided by negative 3. It's positive 2. So 2x minus 7. Now I can look at their slopes. The first equation slope is a negative 1 half. And the second equation slope is 2. 
What do you think? Are these lines parallel or perpendicular? If you said perpendicular, you are right. They are opposite reciprocal slopes, so the lines are perpendicular. Let's look at number four. Okay, these lines are not both in slope intercept form. The second one is, the first one's not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and subtract an X from both sides, and then divide both sides by negative one. So what is the slope of this line? The slope of this line is one. And then this line over here, its slope is also one. Remember, if you don't see a number in front of the variable, it's assumed to be a one. They both have a slope of one. So these two lines are parallel. Now I'd like you to try number seven and number eight. Try those two and see what you get. Okay, so for number seven, you should have neither. The slope of the first equation was a three and the slope of the second equation was a one third. Even though they are reciprocals, they aren't opposite reciprocals. They're both positive. So they are not the same and they're not opposite reciprocals. So we can't choose parallel and we can't choose perpendicular. So the answer has to be neither. In number eight, the slope of the first line was two thirds and the slope of the second line was a negative three over two. They are opposites, one's negative, one's positive, and they are reciprocals. So these two lines are perpendicular. Okay. I'm gonna let number nine and 10 be for you to practice on your own. I would really like to go over number 11 and 12. They even already have little stars next to them. Looking at number 11, it says y equals negative seven and x equals two. What kind of line is x equals negative seven? x equals negative seven is a horizontal line. Remember a horizontal line will always be in the form y equals a constant or y equals a number. What kind of line is x equals two? Now, x equals two is a vertical line. So I want you to picture on a coordinate grid, you have a horizontal line at negative seven and you have a vertical line at x equals two. Are those two lines parallel or perpendicular? Well, they're perpendicular. Okay. If you wanna talk about their slope, you can say that a horizontal line has a slope of zero and a vertical line, well, it has an undefined slope. So what's the opposite reciprocal of zero? Well, it's any number like over zero, but we can't divide by zero. That would be um, an undefined slope, which is exactly what a vertical line has. So if you are given a horizontal and a vertical line, they will always be perpendicular to one another. Looking at number 12, x equals nine is a vertical line and x equals negative five is also a vertical line. So picture a coordinate grid where x equals nine is graphed and x equals negative five is graphed. They're going to have the same undefined slope. So these two lines are parallel. So these are kind of the two weird cases where you can't see the slope in the equation, but you can still figure out whether those lines are parallel or perpendicular. Another way that you might see an equation is in this point slope formula. I love mathematicians when they name their equations based exactly on what they see. The point slope formula tells you that this equation has a point and a slope in it. Okay, it's used to write an equation given a point and given a slope. So the point slope formula says you're gonna have y minus the given y value, we'll call that y1 equals the slope times x minus the given x value. Okay. So if you are given a point and a line, or I'm sorry, a point and a slope, you have everything you need to write this equation. So here I have the point for one, that's gonna be my given x and my given y. So I'm just labeling those x1, y1. The slope is two, so that'll be the m. So our equation will say y minus one equals two, 
x minus four. I'm just taking that x1 and y1 and plugging it into that equation and then plugging in the m. Remember, every equation of a line has to have an x and a y in it, unless it's like a vertical or a horizontal line. All right, now all I have to do is rewrite this into slope intercept form. So I'm going to distribute my two, y minus one equals two x minus eight. I need a y equals, so I'm gonna add one to both sides. So I get y equals two x minus seven. So if they give me a point and a slope, I can write my equation in point slope form and then use that to get it into slope intercept form. Let's look at number two. X one, Y one, there's a point given and a slope of one half. So I'll write Y minus Y one equals the slope times X minus X one. Distribute that one half. So one half times X is one half X. One half times negative two, is negative one. And then I'm going to add four to both sides. Four plus negative one is a three. So there is our equation. Go ahead and try number three. Try number four. Write these equations in your point slope formula. Use your distributive property and a little bit of algebra to get it in y equals mx plus b form. Do that now. So for number three, your equation, final answer, should say y equals 2 thirds x plus four. And number four, y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 7. You can check out the work that I put there on the board. I love it when the um, coordinate has a zero in it. So easy to add or subtract to zero. Right now, what happens if they give us two points? They don't give us a slope. They just give us two points. Oh, but we learned how to calculate the slope given two points. So if they don't give you a point and a slope, if they just give you two points, then you're gonna have to first calculate the slope. Okay, so remember the slope formula says that you can subtract the y values on the top and then subtract the x values on the bottom in the same order. And so I did negative one minus seven, one minus negative three. There it is, one minus negative three. So negative one minus seven is a negative eight. One minus negative three is really one plus three, four. And negative eight over four reduces to a negative two. So your slope is negative two. Now we have what we need to write our equation in point slope form. We actually have more than we need because you only need one point and they have two. So you get to pick which point would you like to use? Pick one of them and it doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna pick this one. I usually circle it so I remember which one I picked. So now I have my point, my x1, y1, my slope, and I can use my point slope form to write that equation. So I'll say y minus seven equals negative two x minus negative three. I'm going to distribute that negative two and combine these at the same time. Minus a negative three is really plus three times a negative two is negative six. And then it will add seven to both sides. So our final answer, two X plus one. Negative two X plus one. There we go. Okay, so if you were given two points, you must first calculate the slope, use that slope and one of the two points to write your equation in slope and or point slope form, and then use algebra to distribute and move some terms around so you can get it in y equals mx plus b. Let's practice it again. Number six, they're giving me two points. So let's calculate the slope. Subtract your y values on the top, subtract your x values in the same order, Negative four plus seven is three. Three plus six is nine. And reduce that fraction, three over nine, reduces to one third. So our slope is one third. Now you pick one of the two points and it doesn't matter which one. 
I'm going to pick here, the second one this time. So this would be y minus negative 4 equals 1 third x minus 3. Well, minus a negative is plus. Distribute that 1 third and subtract a 4 from both sides. And there it is. It doesn't matter which point you choose. If you chose the other one, you're still going to get the same equation at the end. Your work might look differently than my work, but at the very end, our answers will be the same. Go ahead and try number seven and eight. Calculate the slope, write it in your point slope form, and then use algebra and distribution to rewrite it as y equals mx plus b. Go ahead and try those now. So for number seven, you should have y equals negative five over two x plus four. And number eight, you should have gotten y equals three x plus one. If you didn't get those and you'd like to check out my work, you are welcome to look at the key that's posted to OMHS or email me and we can talk about it together. Okay, now these questions are really working towards what you would see on an SOL. It says write an equation parallel to y equals 2x plus 4, and it passes through the point negative 4, negative 1. Everything we've talked about in the video so far can be used for this type of problem. Some of the information is just kind of hidden in there. <clears throat> so let's talk, first talk about parallel. Remember that the lines are parallel when their slopes are equal. So whatever equation I'm going to write is going to have the same slope to this equation. So this, the slope I need is going to be two because it needs to be the same as this, the same slope as this line. That's essentially all the information that I need from this equation. Now I'm done with that. Whatever line I'm writing an equation for also has to contain the point negative four, negative one. Hey, look, I now have a slope and a point. So we can use point slope form. Okay, so point, point slope form says you're going to have y minus your y value equals the slope x minus the x value. So this is really y plus 1. This is really 2x plus 4. Distribute your 2. Subtract a 1. So the equation, the line y equals 2x plus 7, if I were to graph it, I would see that it is indeed parallel to this given line that they gave me, and it goes through that point. Okay, So if they are parallel, they have the same slope, and they pass through the points that they give you. So in number 10, I want to write an equation of a line that is parallel to y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 9. So what will be the slope of my equation? If you said negative 5 over 2, you're right. They have to be the same slope. And my line has to go through negative 6, 7. So now I can write my equation in point slope form. y minus 7 equals negative 5 over 2x minus negative 6. Well, minus a negative is really plus. I'm going to distribute that 5 over 2. Let's see, negative 5 over 2 times 6, negative 15. You can use a calculator if you need to. That's OK. I like fractions. Fractions are my friend. But if they aren't your friend, use a calculator. I'm OK with that. And then we're going to add a 7 to both sides here. So the equation y equals negative 5 halves x minus 8. That If I were to graph that, I would see that it is parallel to this given line, and it goes through the point negative 6, 7. Number 11 is a little bit more challenging because the given equation is not in y equals mx plus b form. You're going to have to rewrite it so it's in y equals mx plus b form to find the slope. Then you'll use that slope in the given point to use point slope form and then use your algebra skills 
to get it into y equals mx plus b form. Try it now. See what you get. Try it. Did you get y equals 1 third x minus 2? <clears throat> if you didn't, that's OK. Let's find your error. Did you find that the slope was 1 third? That was the first thing that you had to do. So you rewrite your equation there in y equals mx plus b form. The point is to find the slope. The slope was 1 third. Because my line needs to be parallel, it's going to have the same slope. So when I use point slope form, I use one third as my slope. I plug in the point negative one three into the equation. I distribute the one third and I subtract a one from both sides. Right, the next three are very similar to what we just did, except these equations need to be perpendicular. <clears throat> so there's only really going to be one difference. And that is, I'm not going to use the same slope. I need the opposite reciprocal slope. So in this given line, y equals 3 fourths x minus 1, the slope here is 3 fourths. My line has to be perpendicular. So the slope of my line is not going to be 3 fourths. My slope needs to be the opposite reciprocal. And now everything we did on the last slide is exactly the same. Plug in your point into point slope form. Use this slope now, the negative 4 thirds. Distribute your negative 4 thirds. And we'll subtract 3 from both sides to get y by itself. So I get negative 4 thirds x plus 1. Try number 13. Figure out the slope of the given equation. Figure out what your slope is going to be. And write an equation that passes through the point 4, 3. Try that one. So the slope of this equation was negative 2. The opposite reciprocal of that will be a positive 1 half. So I plug in my 3 for my y1 and 4 for x1, and then that 1 half for the slope. Distribute the 1 half, add a 3 to both sides, and your equation should say y equals 1 half x plus 1. We'll do number 14 here together. If you want to do it by yourself, you're welcome to pause and then see if you got it right. If you want to do it with me, we'll just let the video continue to play. So now this equation is not in y equals mx plus b form. So we are going to solve for y to get it in that form. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. 3y equals negative 5x minus 21. Divide both sides by 3 to get that y by itself. So y equals negative 5 thirds x minus 7. Always leave that fraction as an ugly fraction. Don't try to make it a decimal. Especially here, you would have to round it. and You don't want to round. So always keep it just that fraction, even though it's ugly. So the slope of this equation is negative 5 thirds. So the slope of the equation we need is going to be the opposite reciprocal of that. So opposite means it's going to be positive. Reciprocal means flip that 3 and the 5. All right, all that work just for the slope. Now we'll use that slope in this point to write our equation. y minus this y value equals the slope times x minus this x value here, negative 5. y minus 1 equals 3 fifths x. See, this would be positive. So plus 3. Add a 1 to both sides. 3 fifths to x plus 4. And there it is. On multiple choice tests, I guarantee you the answer where you had used the slope of negative 5 thirds would have shown up there. So just be careful with the slopes. Make sure you're using the right one. That's the end of the lesson. If you have any questions, please feel free to join me in office hours Tuesdays at noon. There's also practice problems on OMHS for you to try out. Those are a great place to also figure out what you might know or not know, and a good place to find questions to bring to office hours. Since I can't answer specific questions from exit tickets or quizzes, I can answer any question from a practice, pro practice problem. 
I hope you guys have a wonderful day and we will talk soon.